people just come out of nowhere. And each year we're gifted by another person. This year it was Jamie Benice who paid a thousand dollars deed franchise with Liz and I. And oh really? Back today, wow. Yeah. He's fabulous. I mean, there's people like that who just appear and like little angels, and uh, you know, it just makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> Those were some good French fries too. You they were good French fries. So. <laughs> and for a thousand dollars, she she got unlimited ketchup too. So as yeah. much ketchup as she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also too, I wanted to acknowledge that my co-host David had contributed to uh, buying a lane this year in the name of our show, K2 Radio. So I want to acknowledge that and thank him for that as well. Lane sponsorship is a huge thing for us, and yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Now, also, when these funds, I was going to I read about how they're used, and they go to the American Cancer Society, they go to research, advocacy, I can hardly ever say that word, education, look good, feel better, wig fittings, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and support groups like Road to Recovery and Reach to Recovery programs. Um, That's a lot of people you're helping, both that are in the middle of it or the ones that are recuperating and need the help. I'm sorry, my throat was going there. Um, so do you decide how the money is distributed, or do that you just give it to the American Cancer Society and they go ahead and distribute it to those various ways? They, they, they do. They do the deciding, and we established that in uh, even, the, even the first year, the small check we turned over to them 10 years ago. And it, it's not... My area of the country, American Society, or Liz's American Cancer Society, it's the general fund. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it, it benefits everybody. It's not just a, a specific area of the country. And, yes, the ACS determines who needs it, the most. Who needs funding mm-hmm. that particular year, and that's where the money is going to go. Now, you have a lot of daytime actors at these events. What was the most you ever had? Was it this year? It seemed like there were so many more. I don't know, Liz. I think it was this year. Yeah, this year was. Uh, yeah, we had a long line. It took it took forever to introduce everybody to get to to go into the lanes. And, and imagine if 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 uh, we had had all the shows <laughs> up in there. I know. <laughs> we, we would yeah, have we'd had to, to, we too, get. too much for the fire fire uh, department. So. Yeah, I think this year was excellent. We had. Several actors per lane. Yes, I was wondering how you decide that as far as the lanes, like who gets on what team and who of the the fans gets to bowl with whom. Is it kind of like a raffle on that end too? Oh, let's be honest. Who's young enough to pick up a bowling ball? We start there. (laughs) (laughs) And I being of a certain age, I'm, I'm past bowling. Yeah, I do go to every lane and Liz, and we thank them. But it's mostly the young them. kids who are out there bowling, and I'm including Grant Alexander and Michael O'Leary as young kids, so you can still hobble up and throw the ball down. The, down well, all the, the lane. other actors bowl. We we kind of roam, and, and and which is which is nice. But all the other actors are are, are out there. I I think Wendy has a lot to do with. Um, uh, divvying up the <laughs> the lanes and and, and deciding mm-hmm. she tries to keep the actors from the same shows and, uh, and together there's a theme happening but you know it's such an intimate space that you have the opportunity of of hanging out with everybody while they're bowling um it's it's not like you can't see what's going on with Grant and Mike down at the at one end <laughs> but I'm you know, sure that they, they, they would like to cuz they always get into trouble whenever those two are together but um, yeah but we always every actor who's RSVP is yes we 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 ask them of course we don't force people to bowl we ask them yeah. if you would like to and and have you know three or four uh, people who paid to get there to bowl to bowl with them but uh, some of them just want to uh, be part of the atmosphere around the auction and just milling and talking to people 
And uh, Liz and I go to each and every lane, and we thank the, the actors and the people who are there for buying the the opportunity to bowl with Grant or Mike. <laughs> and anyway, we're making sure that Grant and Mike are being nice to them and everything like that. So we just right. go around well, and thank people sure. <laughs> and solve problems. <laughs> And it's funny because I was going to ask you who's the better bowler, you or Liz, but now I know neither one of you are doing that these days. <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, it's Liz's husband who should be there bowling, but uh, Liz oh, and yeah, I are Bobby. not too good I should get my kids, my, Bobby and the, the kids. But, hey, they haven't done that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I listen. I I still remember we had the last conversation we had. I wasn't even sure if you if you want a a high score or a low score. Now what was that with bowling? That's right. Yeah. Is this like golf? <laughs> Is it yeah. like golf? I mean, I still don't know. Uh, do we want a low score or a high score? Yes. <laughs> Well, I was looking through the photos on Daytime Stars and Strikes website um, to see all of the actors that were there and all those involved in it. And it just, you know, it brings tears to my eyes to see so many people participate in this and try to help out something with such a worthy cause. Um, Liz, I saw a picture of you and your daughter, Bella, and she looks exactly like you. She's gorgeous. Well, thank you for that. Uh, she's uh, she is gorgeous, uh, inside and out. Um, I'm very proud of her. And she she showed up towards the end of the bowling. Um, she was out and about with um, her 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 friend in the city. And uh, yeah, I've got teen- I've got a two teenagers now, so that's pretty intense. But that, that's nice to have her. I think because I remember the first time she came, Jerry. What was she? Maybe maybe. Four years old. Yeah, she was kind of freaked out by it. You know. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, both the kids. I think they were like three and four. They they came. They were a little little frightened by the millions of people. Um, so so yeah, it's kind of fun. And your kids have come over the years. That's it, right. It's been nice. I like it when when Beth and the and the boys come. It's nice. So yeah, my two boys uh, used to come, and then when uh, my youngest worked for. Uh, a golf club in Manhattan. He sponsored a lane and, you know, sent over a bunch of stuff from his place. So, yeah, they, they've kind of grown up with it. And uh, even my mother-in-law, who's in her 80s, was there one year. So it, it's fun to have family coming. Yeah, I love so seeing I, the families that are participating. I saw yeah, that very kind of Austin Peck brought theirs, too. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I said that I saw that Terry Kahn and Austin Pack brought their children as well. Yes, they did. And so did Orla. Orla Cassidy, um, her son, uh, showed up um, towards mm, mid, midway through as well. So that was kind of fun. And for the first time ever this year, we had an executive producer there. My boss at One Life to Live, uh, Jen oh, yes. Severman. Yes. Well, she brought her son, too. I think he came because there were 100 televisions and all, and they were all on football. So, you know, he, he was oh. in heaven. <laughs> but he uh, Jerry Pepperman was kind enough to drop in and stay for about three hours. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, Liz and Jerry, this is Dawn, by the way. I, uh, I must tell you, as I was reviewing all the pictures, you two do not age, nor does Grant Alexander. What is the secret there? <laughs> you guys look wonderful still. I mean, you look like you did when you were, you know, based on Guiding Light. Grant, he never ages either. So I just wonder if there was some secret formula that you guys have that we don't know about. Wow. That's a good one. Maybe it's the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant doesn't age, does he? he just, You're right. Yeah, Grant does not age. To my eyes, he, he looks, looks pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. He really does. He really does. Um, it, it's just amazing. <laughs> um, so the kids, the kids are not um, are not starstruck by anybody coming on. You mean our our my, our personal kids? Yes. Oh no, they've grown up with us. The shadow family, the shadow life. They they they. N- they're no. To them, this is it's all just family. It's, yeah, it's all pretty normal for them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my youngest, uh, 
I mean, he, he, he well, Jake was a presenter at the Emmys when he was five years old, so he's pretty much grown up with uh, with the press and with you know all the events that happen throughout the year. And uh, and in the old days, it used to be guiding like fan club that I did, so I you know I was missing every Sunday, and then it morphed into a uh, bowling event. So I'm gone every Sunday in October, and uh, so yeah, they're 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 very used to it. I think the, the caliber of people that are on these shows, we're, we're just, everybody's a family, for the most part, the majority of people are family people, and kids feel at home. It's, this is not going to Hollywood and, and living in the land, you know, of plastic. They're, they're, this is, it's a nice group, and and uh, I think that the kids feel that, so I've been very um, fortunate, and I feel blessed that they had an opportunity to grow up around all these kids, all these other people. Yeah, well, and, I think you know, too, that it, with Liz it being is right a bowling, about the quality of people. Yeah, with it being a bowling event, it makes it easier on the kids too. It's not a big, you know, black tie event. Oh yeah. Oh no, that is not. It's 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 it, it, if one thing, it's it's pretty darn casual. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's French fries. Yeah. <laughs> right. French fries and ketchup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the actors and the quality of people uh, that the actors are is, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's really was showing up this year. And then, like Robin Strasser, for instance, she gave a $1,000 check and she had posters and bags of designer clothes that she, that she donated. And uh, the oldest and kids who played... Uh, Star and Matthew on One Life to Live when it was on ABC. They, they donated a lunch, and somebody bought it online. So it's and Rebecca Staub, who's living out in Los Angeles for heaven's sake, she used to be on on Guiding Light. She donated uh, a luncheon to be sold, and so it's all sorts of things like you know they're, they're taking hours and hours out of their lives and 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 donating and donating what they can and those lunches are very popular items <laughs> on the auction. Oh, I'm sure they but, are. Yeah, e- yeah, even if so. it is just with french fries. <laughs> Who really yeah, they're very popular anyhow. things. So <laughs> and Gina Tononi did the same thing and and Liz did the same thing with donating life coaching and you know the people are just so generous that uh, sometimes it's it's surprising what they do. Yeah, I'm sorry that I missed one of those posters from Robin Strasser. I just happened to see it late on, you know, on the Facebook page, and I would cool. love to have had one of those. It was, yeah, I mean, that was Dorian to the max in that poster. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> it's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it went for a lot of money, so it was a good auction item. So that's always what we look for. Yeah, those I are, always those... lug in a, a, a ton of scripts and and you know props and stuff and you know I was stealing things left and right this year and just stuffing them oh, yeah. in my bag and going home because I I thought oh my god this is this, this is two hundred dollars at the auction <laughs> so I was yeah. I was I was busy. That's mm-hmm. funny. Now, what was the most unique item that was auctioned off? I don't know. What do you think, Liz? Gee, I'm trying to think about this. Probably something of Robin's because I, you know, usually there it's all it's always some crazy like you know a dress that Reva wore, you know, some famous Mm -hmm. thing. You know, there's always something that that that's. um, I'm trying to think what happened. It has to be Robin's Robin's things. Well, we had a lot of unique things that went beyond daytime, like. Peter Bartlett, who plays uh, my beloved butler on uh, One Life to Live, he's playing the lead in Cinderella. He's one of the leads. And so we had, uh, you know, assigned playbills, and we even got Ron Raines to scrounge around and see if he had any Follies playbills, and he did, so he signed them. And So there are some unique things you just won't find anywhere else. Definitely. Definitely. There is one thing that, caught my eye and I wish I I could have come down. I uh had my eye on Clint's sport jacket and I thought that was uh that's some price. Now was that up to you to donate that or wardrobe or 
Well, wardrobe doesn't know it, but they did donate. 